I'm Professor Bryony Horgan. I'm a professor of planetary science at Purdue University, and I use NASA satellites and rovers to explore the moon, Mars, and worlds beyond. Perseverance right now is located in an ancient river channel that was carved by water flowing across the surface of Mars over 3 billion years ago. It cuts through the rim of Jezero Crater, which is the crater that we're exploring with the rover, and Perseverance was right down in the bottom of it. And geologists love river channels because they, they cut through old rock and show you what used to be there before. And so on the bottom of this very ancient river channel, we found some layered rocks. We think they're sediments that were uh, laid down a long time ago. And in those rocks, we found these uh, very small little spots. We actually called them leopard spots because they're these little areas of kind of gray or blue surrounded by dark rings. And the way that you make those kinds of spots uh, is through chemical reactions. And those kinds of chemical reactions on Earth sometimes are actually driven by microbial life. And that's one of the big things we're looking for on Mars is signs of ancient microbial life trapped in the rocks. And these little leopard spots we found in these ancient sediments laid down by water on Mars uh, may be a sign of that. They could be a pot what we call a potential biosignature created by ancient microbes living in those rocks. So one of the reasons that we think this could be a potential sign of ancient life is because we don't just see these little leopard spots that have this chemical reaction recorded in the rock. We also see evidence for organic molecules. Now, organic molecules can be formed a lot of different ways. They're even, you know, floating through space as we speak, formed by processes having nothing to do with life, but they're an important building block of life. And if we see concentrations of organics, that actually itself can be a potential biosignature, a sign that life was there and left behind some organics. In these little leopard spot rocks, we actually do see extremely strong signatures of organic molecules with some of our very high resolution instruments that we use on board the rover. So that's really exciting. We also see lots of evidence that water once interacted with these rocks. I already said these could be sedimentary rocks that were laid down by water flowing over the surface, but we also see evidence that water flowed through these rocks later in the form of salts that are uh, trapped in the rock in these veins that cut through the rocks, sort of these white stripes of salty, of salty rocks that kind of cut through the sediments. And so we see lots of evidence that water was involved in these rocks, uh, both when they were laid down and later when they were altered. And so that gives us uh, a lot of confidence that these rocks record an ancient environment that was habitable for life, including microbial life. And so when you put all that together, uh, this is a really strong case. This is an excellent sample that we took from this rock to help us understand whether or not ancient Mars hosted microbial life. So the way the rover investigates rocks on Mars, uh, we actually have a bunch of different instruments on board that we use together to understand what a rock is and what it might be telling us about ancient habitable environments. So I work on the camera team on the MassCam Z cameras, uh, which are the eyes of the rover, and we use those to scout out which rocks look uh, interesting, we could actually see the leopard spots with the mass cam Z uh, with our the color filters and things we have on the cameras. And then once we identify that, we can drive up, get really close. And we have a big arm, a seven foot long arm that has a bunch of high resolution, you know, really powerful instruments that we can put down on the rock itself. So on the end of that arm, there's uh, there's an instrument that can map out the, the chemistry of the rock at the scale of a grain of rice, so very, very small. And that's the one we use, the pixel instrument. We use that to detect these uh, evidence of ancient chemical reactions uh, across the leopard spots. We also have the Sherlock instrument, which is, is a spectrometer that uh, zaps the rock with a little bit of light and looks at how the rock reacts. And that's the one we use to detect possible signs of organics in this rock too. So really it's pulling all those instruments together along with uh, a bunch of other amazing instruments we have on board the rover, using all that data together to understand that this uh, is an awesome sample to potentially bring home and look for signs of ancient life in uh, when NASA gets to that using Mars sample return, a whole new mission we're currently working on.
NASA is still working out how exactly we're going to bring that sample home, but uh, we have a lot of great ideas and NASA is really just fine tuning it. So right now the rover is carrying uh, more than 20 samples of different, completely different rocks that we've sampled uh, over the last couple of years roving through Jezero Crater. And those are actually on board the rover itself. We also have a set that we left behind just to be safe, make sure they were in a nice safe spot on the floor of Jezero Crater just to have as a, as a backup plan. But the hope is that NASA will send a new spacecraft to Mars that will land, that the rover can rove up to and uh, take all of our samples and put them safely inside of a capsule that can launch off using a rocket that will launch into space. That rocket will then uh, rendezvous with a satellite in orbit around Mars, which will bring the samples home. So the details of that NASA is still working on, trying to figure out how to do it as efficiently and cost effectively as possible. Um, but uh, that's the general idea. So the reason it's hard is because it takes so many steps, right? You have to get the samples. We're doing a great job of that. You have to get them on a spaceship, get them into orbit, get them into a satellite, and then land back on Earth. So it's really, it's a really, really hard mission, but uh, NASA and the European Space Agency are working together to try to make it happen. I'm an optimist, so I think that we will find signs of life beyond Earth, uh, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, you know, whether that's just microbes in our own backyard and in our own solar system, or if that's intelligent life beyond, I do think that there is life out there. Uh, you know, we always say that life finds a way, right? That's the classic Jurassic Park line. <laughs> and it's true though, life is incredibly resilient. I find it hard to believe that Earth is the only planet that life ever evolved on. So I'm, I'm an optimist, I'm hopeful, and that's the reason we're exploring Mars. It's because we think life uh, should be common in the universe based on what we understand about it. So I hope that we'll bring those samples of rocks back from Mars, look at them and see really clear evidence that uh, microbes once existed inside of those rocks. But, you know, even if we don't, NASA is going to keep looking because it's the one of the biggest scientific questions we can possibly answer is, are we alone in the universe? So I became a planetary scientist because I started reading science fiction when I was in college, actually, not until I was in college. I didn't even know you could do space exploration as a career, really, unless you're an engineer, until I started reading uh, all kinds of amazing science fiction books. I also read some of Carl Sagan's uh, early books and watched the Cosmos TV series. And that uh, actually you know, explained to me that you can be a planetary scientist. That's a, that's a job that exists. And so uh, once I knew that, I started thinking about applying to grad school to to do planetary science and here I am working on a rover on Mars. <laughs>